I had been interested in parish work with the Latinos. And uh, I thought, I think that's, that's what I feel called to do is to, because I am bilingual and uh, I figured, well, I could maybe be of some help. I wanted so much to be able to be involved in the ministries that were very specifically targeted to social justice. A sister who was teaching in high school had a class in social justice and uh, Sister Marilyn Rudy, and she was taking her class to Venice, California to see what could be done to help this community of poor people, mostly Hispanic. She said she would start out with food stamps. Uh, that's kind of a, a non-threatening and necessary area. So she invited me to come. She said, there's some Spanish-speaking people out there. Maybe you could come and help me with, with them. So we started St. Joseph's Center. It has grown into an, an incredible service center with many programs now. We started with two of us, and then now I think there's about 50-some staff members and administrators that serve St. Joseph's Center. For me, the first thing was, of course, seeing all the people we served. I didn't grow up in poverty, but when you see it face to face and you see uh, the conditions that some folks had, families had to live in, you realize uh, the, the dire needs that some of these families were in. When I was on the board between 86 and 2000, I saw the remarkable work of the many programs we sponsored. We were an evolving social service institution. The logo that Sister Marilyn Rudy and Sister Louise Bernstein uh, established, hope through empowerment. Every part of it important to bring a person to greater hope in their life journey, not through Band-Aid measures, but through empowering them, trying to analyze, to diagnose what were the obstacles that they were facing in their lives and what could be some programs to remedy those, to heal them and to bring them to a place of self-sufficiency. So we had a little job desk. We had connections with some of the parishes in the area, which were very supportive and did a, really helped us get started. Staff, how remarkable they truly are, so filled with the same love and spirit of the charism. These staff members, they may not have all the words, but they love the dear neighbor and they were willing to go to such great lengths to serve the dear neighbor, to find the resource that was going to turn around this person's life. So there are a lot of homeless folks. We would make sandwiches and take them to the folks on the beach, but the city of Santa Monica did not like that. And so as a result, we fell heir to this restaurant that was closing down the street. And uh, so we invested some money and, and bought the restaurant which became Bread and Roses. And it is a restaurant, and the people, the homeless people, sign up, make a reservation, you might say, to come and have a meal. It's, it's a, a lovely program because it, it's treating the homeless in a dignified way. There's flowers on the table and tablecloths, and they are served by volunteers. I love our volunteers, too. They're just wonderful people. Without our volunteers, we couldn't run the Bread and Roses Cafe or we couldn't run the food pantry for the low income. Every Tuesday, I go to the food pantry and we have such a combination of people at the food pantry and they're so grateful. Now, along this, you get to know some people by name, which is really fun, and you get to know some of their situations. I try to um, interact with them uh, maybe even it's saving a certain kind of bread for somebody that, you know, always wants sweet bread. And so I said, oh, we still have some. Here's, here's a bag. Oh, thank you so much. They call me sometimes sister, sometimes hermana, sometimes mom, sometimes nothing, just thank you. I have a Russian lady who comes up to me and kisses me all the time. So I love this experience in the food pantry. When the sisters began to leave schools and uh, go on to other ministries, we had a 
sort of gathered together for support because w many people were shaking their finger at us and here you are deserting the children and deserting the parents and uh, we need you and you're, you're good teachers and all that sort of thing. So we decided that we, we kind of should band together and we should support each other. And so that group began to grow more and more and more. We're, we're to the point now where you can, if you see a need, you can respond to it, all things being equal. I felt that I was kind of at, at the beginning of that, and I, I helped rally the, <laughs> the forces, you might say, and support and, and encourage people who were feeling called, as I did, to, to serve the neighbor in, in a different way.